Hey guys, it's Whitney. Welcome to World Shakers TV and get ready to receive a powerful message. getting my information from the world or the word? Am I getting my information from the sun, from the spirit, or from the system? Because you are going to manifest whatever it is that your soul receives. So whatever you depositing or letting being deposited in your soul, so if you manifesting them bad relationships, look out, look out, look out. that's because you're getting your information from somewhere other than the spirit. Like why I keep uh, attracting all these, um, ain't no other way to say it, but niggas. <laughs> like I, like I, be, I be trying to edit myself, you know. But how, why, I keep, why I keep manifesting this thing? Because it depends on where I get my information or my revelation from. If I'm taking the way that this person goes through life as the information and the blueprint for my life, then I'm going to manifest what it is that I receive. So I got to watch what I'm looking at. Because... What you let in here is going to determine what happens out here. Because out of the heart, so the issues of life. So whatever gets in here is going to be out here. So if you got trust issues, then that means that you've been getting some wrong information concerning trust. Or maybe you just don't trust in the Lord the way you say you do. Because if you trust in him, then you understand what true trust really means. Because you know that God's not a man that he should lie. So if you've been putting up with some lies... I received, then you getting your information from the wrong place. So now you're always manifesting. But now I got to be, uh, I got to control my manifestation. Because in this life, I got to be the captain of my soul. I have to be able to control what I let in and what I let out. Because what I let out is what's going to manifest in my life. What I let in, it was what's going to manifest in my life. And so now, today, I want to take the, uh, the contradiction out of confession. Like, I want to take, uh, let me see, let me, hold on, let me, let me not get ahead of myself. Let me, let me, let me give you some other stuff first. Uh, let's turn to Galatians. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians 6, verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. For he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So now, if I'm always manifesting, then that got to mean one thing, that I'm always sowing. Because manifestation don't come without sowing. And so now, what 
am I sowing determines what I'm manifesting. Because, like, you know, what you sow, you reap. So when you wake up in the morning, your sowing starts. Because don't nobody, don't nobody want, you know, bad karma, right? Don't nobody want, because, you know, there, there are some seeds that you've sown that you, you beg and pray to God that you don't reap a harvest from them seeds. Because you done did some people dirty. Look out, look out. And you like, Lord, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because I just sold some seeds, and I didn't pray for my future children. I didn't say, Lord, don't let me reap it. Don't let them reap it either. But I knew that what I had sown just wasn't a good seed. But I hadn't sold it, and so now, you know, I believe I didn't already reap that seed, boy. God, dog. It hurt, too. It hurt. But what a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So there's no, um, there, like, it's not only good seeds you sow that you reap. Like, it's bad seeds you sow that you reap. And so that's why manifestation can be whatever it is that you're sowing. That's why you're always manifesting, whether you know it or not. Because you're always sowing, whether you know it or not. The way you talk to that person, that's a seed. No, 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 no. When somebody get out the box with you and talk out of the way and, mm -mm, uh -uh, you you reaping that harvest. Don't put hands. You reaping that harvest. Because what a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And so now, if I want to control my reaping, yes, I got to control my sowing. Yes, Christ is so simple. You reap what you sow. So if there's some change in reaping that you want to take place, then there must be some change in sowing that takes place. I can't expect something without doing something. I got to agree with the process. And so now if it's sowing and reaping, I don't like what I'm reaping, then that must mean that I must not stop. I got to stop liking what I'm sowing. But if I want to change my reaping and I want to reap these things or more things, then I got to change the way that I'm sowing. If I'm reaping things at a certain level, but I want to reap more, then I got to sow more. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Your three-year-old baby understands. Yes, and so now, my mind, uh, if I allow it, will do a number on me, and it'll keep me in a place to where I accept where I'm at. Because there's a thing where, there's a thing called adaptation. Come on. Well, you begin to adapt yes, to what it is that you got. Yes, That's why I, I say, they say when you get something new, like, like the, the thrill that, that that new thing gives you don't last long because you adapt to it. Yes. Right. And so now it's no longer new. Yes. And so now you've gotten comfortable with that thing. And so now, like, you don't, you don't get excited about that no more. Right. Like when you got your new car, right. bro. You posted pictures, you kept it clean, couldn't nobody ride in there, they couldn't eat in there. <laughs> like I remember my, when I first got that, when I, when I first got that Benz. I am. Any to-go food, gotta go in the trunk. <laughs> Cause I don't want no food smell in my car. I wanna keep that new car smell as long as I can. But after a while, I don't feel like going in the trunk. <laughs> Just sit this on the floor. Because I've adapted to it, and so now it's become common. But that's, so that's adaptation. So now, we, we sometimes we get adapted to the way that we live, and we become comfortable with that, thinking that this is, it, it just is what it is. But it ain't gotta be, it is what it is. I can make it what it is. I can make it what I want it to be. 
If I'm not satisfied with what is, then I change it to what I want it to be. But I don't just accept it because, you know, well, maybe this is just where I am in life and uh, I'm going to just be content with this. That's not, no, 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 no. Because being content uh, and being uh, stupid are two different things. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think I just like saying stupid. But I think it, 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 it. I know. I know. I know it. I know it hit us as a culture a different way. Yeah. Now, somebody say something about stupid, like you automatically you just, yeah. you know, you feel a certain type of way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, you in school and somebody call you, they call you whatever. They call you stupid though. You ain't gonna be calling me stupid. <laughs> They've been to call you all kinds of kind of names, but don't you call me stupid though. Don't you call me stupid and don't you talk about my mama. <laughs> Either one of them. I'm a whoop. Either one. But now I can't just accept something and just think that this is the level that God wants me to live on. Uh, right now, this is just my cross to bear. And we just accept things and get comfortable with them and just go ahead with life. And, uh, and, and, and I think, because I think, I think as Christians, we have a very skewed uh, understanding, a revelation of what it means to be uh, meek and humble. Because we think, you know, just going by and just not, you know, just, you know, just I'm, I'm, I'm good with this right here. And, you know, just that's cool right there. I'm just being humble. And, you know, God go see my humbleness and all that. I remember there was a story, you know, Dr. Phil, he was sitting in the back of a meeting, and the apostle said, why are you sitting way back there? Oh, because I just don't need no seat in the front. He said, son, you think you're being humble, but you're being stupid. <laughs> that stupid just hit different. <laughs> it, just, it just hit different. Because when I hear that stupid, my ears start percolating. <laughs> so I'm about to see if you're about to say something else about me, if I got a swing or not. <laughs> but... As Christians, sometimes we think that we're being humble in the thing, but we're really just being stupid. We're being ignorant to the truth about what's reality. And so now I can't let uh, a skewed perception of reality uh, determine or, or, or distract me from my true reality. Because my true reality is the reality that I create. It's the reality that I possess. Because I already possess my reality. But I got to manifest my reality in this world because the kingdom is within me and so I got to manifest the kingdom in this world so I'm not of this world but I'm in this world so now that's why like when people be people be so uh, enamored or so focused on going to heaven because they talk about the streets of gold you know and the pearly gates you know and in the, the walls of sapphire and jade and all that other stuff but the purpose of that being so nice it's because you're supposed to bring that niceness all right, say that, say that. All right, come on, come on. Thy kingdom come. Now I come to your kingdom. Your kingdom come. That will be done in earth. In me. Because it got to be done in me before it's done out of me. I'm not going to be able to manifest nothing else if it... It's not in me. There's nothing that you could say if it ain't in you. If there's a word that you don't know, I don't care how much you want to say something uh, smart sounding, you're not going to be able to reach that word because it ain't in you. It's not in your vocabulary. So as much as you want to sound smart, you start saying words that don't match what you're trying to say and you think you're sounding smart, but you're really sounding stupid because you use a word out of context. But if you don't know a word, you can't use that word. And so now, I can't let come out what ain't in. And so now, I want you to be seed conscious. Or have seed consciousness. Be conscious of what a seed is and the power and ability that a seed possesses. Because a seed has the ability to create a whole forest. And so now I got to be conscious of what that seed is because if I want to reap a thing, 
I got to identify the seed. That's why a lot of times in church, like, we name our seeds because when that harvest comes up, I want to be able to identify which seed brought that harvest. And so a lot of times, ah, oh, Jesus, there's, a, there's something that God will give you. He'll give you instructions to sow a certain type of seed. But if I'm not conscious of what that is, then, because if he, like, if, if, if God tell you to sow something, then it's my belief that he knows what's on the inside of that seed. It's my belief that if that seed ain't have nothing in it, there's something special that he put on the inside of that seed just for you. And so that's why a lot of times we can't get hung up on the amount because we think, well, no, I got to be this to do that. But it's about the yielding, the surrendering, the obedience. Because yesterday uh, we was in the airport, just, just landed. I'm tired because, you know, plane sleep ain't the best sleep. No matter uh, where you sit, it just ain't your bed. It ain't bed sleep. That bed sleep hit different. And so I'm tired, you know, right? I'm just like, you know, just ready to get home, relax, uh, you know, just kick my feet up, you know, eat something, take a nap, chill out, right? And so we walking through the airport. Uh, you know, Baton Rouge Airport is a real small airport, so you don't walk through it that long. Like it's, it's, a, it's a real short walk. It's like off the plane, at my car. That quick. And so we walk in, and so I see this, uh, this lady and her son at the popcorn stand, you know, uh, I'm, I'm guessing buying some popcorn. I don't know, they, they might have just been talking to the girl behind, I don't know. But I'm walking, and so, you know, <laughs> I hear the Lord say, pay for it. And so I'm just saying, I'm just like, you know, you know. I'm just walking, I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm just, I'm tired, you know, I want to pay for it, what are you talking about? And then I'll go a little couple steps further, and he say, pay for it. And so I understood that he meant the popcorn. I don't know the lady, never seen the lady, I don't know the boy, never seen the boy, but it's all about obedience. And so it don't matter what it is, just obey what he says. And so now, he said, okay, so now, you know, I was going in my pocket, and so, you know, uh, uh, I was like, how much popcorn costs? And so I was looking, I was like, mm, maybe a 10 will get it. But then he said, no, that ain't enough. And so I said, all right, I don't want to, uh, you know, they, it might not be the size they want. They might want a bigger size, and $10 ain't going to cut it. Come on. So I went on ahead and gave her 20. Because you can, you can, you, Unless you just a glutton, you can get some good popcorn for twenty dollars. <laughs> Unless you just buy a pop popcorn for everybody, you can buy some popcorn for twenty dollars. And so I laid it. I, I just put it in my pocket, laid it on the on the counter, and she say, "What you doing that for?" And I just said, "Cause I want to." I say, "Have a good day," and I walked off. Because I ain't, I ain't like I don't need to know who he is, what your backstory is. That's right. Like That's right. you might have you might have money to buy it, and I had and I have money to buy it. But that ain't none of my business. My only part was to sow that seed. And so I don't know what God spoke to her after I left, but I just got to be surrendered, yielded, and obedient to be able to flow however he want to flow. And so now I not only have to have seed conscious, but I have to have abundance consciousness. Like, you got to get rid of that uh, just enough consciousness. Yes, sir. Like, you haven't had that consciousness for long enough. You be, trying to, you be trying to manage your money just to have enough mm -hmm. to get to that next paycheck. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nope, we can't get that this week. We got to wait till next week. You got to get rid of that consciousness. I receive. And you got to adopt, you got to receive abundant consciousness, overflowing consciousness, because that overflow hit different. You know, when, when you got more money, then you got obligations. You know, it's a different feeling. 
Where you won't go this weekend? We got extra money to spend. It just hit different. That's why people be so upset sometimes, because they can't go nowhere. People get tired of sitting in the house looking at the same wall and the same TV all the time. I get tired of going down this street. Let me go down the street, I don't know I can't pronounce. Me even trying to understand why their wife be so frustrated sometimes. Why they be? It ain't that time of the month. It's just that. It's just that part of life. Because if a, if a woman feel like all she is doing is cooking, cleaning, working, taking care of kids, and laying for you, then she. It's gonna get frustrated. She is gonna get fed up. Because I'm here more for more than just this. Because this ain't what you promised me. Pachum, pachum. But now, like, I'm just, like, it's just, it just is what it is. Like, the reason that there's so much contention and strife and stress come on, come on. is because you're not living at the level that you want to live. You're not doing the things that you want to do. Because when you, when, when you are out, I still have the nostalgia today. When you are out in an infinity pool, overlooking the ocean with uh, no care in the entire world, that's freedom. Some people mind can't go there because they say, I ain't never seen that. I don't even know what that feel like. This is when you got to use your imagination. This is when you got to, you got to, you got to, you got to, like the internet is too vast. Like, even if you got to print out an ocean view and put it on your wall, yes, sir. Yes, sir. then you got to put that in, because now, come on. because what I'm about to do is I'm about to attract that ocean view to my life. And so now it might be on that paper, but I'm about to attract that thing by the law of attraction. That thing is about to be attracted to my life. And so now it's not going to be just on the paper for a while. I'm going to have a new paper. I went and took a picture yes, sir. myself yeah. of that same view. Because yeah. yeah. let me see. I'm not, I'm not here for the, uh, I'm not here for the, uh, for the people that, uh, I'm, not, I'm not here for the people that have uh, no drive or no desire uh, or, or no dreams or no visions. Um, I'm not here for them. So sometimes to them, uh, they don't understand me because Come on. I'm, not, uh, I'm not talking to you. Amen. Ooh, oh. Hallelujah. <laughs> You're listening to a conversation that don't concern you. Oh, my God. Come on, Pastor. Hallelujah. But it can, yeah. I receive, if you wanted to. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Be it unto you according to your faith. Your faith. Amen. Because you can go wherever you want to go. The only determining factor on where you can go is you. You're the only one that can stop it. Can't nobody else stop you but you. The thief can't even steal from you unless you give it to him. Just think about walking in the street and they got somebody. And they got somebody that wanna uh, wanna take what's yours. Come on. I receive. And then you be like, here you go. Get your purse out the street. 
Who got a purse? Give me a purse. I need a purse. That's a, uh, that's a clutch. I need a purse. I, 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 know, I know my differences. So now, if you leave your purse in the street, any Tom, Dick, and Harry can walk up and take whatever they want out of there. It's when you leave stuff down, can it be taken from you? And so now, if I don't want nothing to be taken from me, I got to stop leaving it out in the open. I got to stop leaving it to where somebody could take what's mine. Because there's, like, your house is your house. His house is his house. Her house is her house. Ain't nobody got nobody else's house. They got enough houses and cars for everybody to have whatever they want. So now I can't get jealous of somebody else for getting a new car when I can get a new car too. And I can get a new, ta- a new car uh, freely. Not, uh, not, not, not boundly, not, like not, uh, like I ain't, I ain't gotta be in the office for eight hours yes, trying to call this bank and that bank. Somebody help my brother out. Because I got money to get what I want. So, uh, so, oh, oh, okay, I got a good one for you. Hmm, let me get your purse back for somebody to steal something out of there. Whatever you desire, don't wait for it. Whatever you desire, don't wait for it. Don't wait, but just delight. If you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. So a lot of people, we've been waiting without delighting. We've been desiring and been waiting, but all we got to do is delight. Like, do your part. You're trying to, so bad to get your desires. And all you got to do is delight. And so now, here, I want to I wanna take, uh, I want to give you this confession. Because I believe uh, this confession is going to break some things loose in your life. Because what happens a lot is that you confess something, but then you get hit with a thought contradictory to what you just confessed. And so what we, what, we, what we tend to do is we try to confess over the contradiction. Or we try to confess the contradiction out. We try to confess, confess, confess to what now, that thought that keep coming up, like we go confess it out. But that mug keep coming back. You confess, 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 and it be like that. I'm just wait for you right here. And so your confession is going forth, but there's that thought that's still there taking it back. And so now somebody say, I'm free. And then you get a thought, say, girl, no, you ain't. (laughs) And then you got this war going on in your mind to where my inner conversation it's telling me one thing, and my outer conversation is trying to take me somewhere else. But if my outer conversation tries to take me somewhere that my inner conversation don't agree, then I'll never get there. That's right. That's right. And because so, you know, you didn't, you have, you have, uh, you ever tried to cast down a thought, <laughs> and then more keep rising up. <laughs> I rebuke you, Satan! I cast down that thought in Jesus' name. <laughs> it come right back up. How can I cast down a thought and it keep coming back? You ever cast down a thought and then, like, your inner conversation teamed up with the thought and then they talked you <laughs> out of what you were saying? He was like, yeah, y'all right, y'all right, y'all right. Y'all right. Yeah, I know. I, yeah, you know, y'all, I believe y'all. And so the thing that God spoke to you, you didn't go ahead and you didn't agree with the contradiction that rolls up. And so then where that leave you? Stuck, stagnant, no progress, in the same place, going around in circles, because that inner conversation 
just won't seem to get right. Like them thoughts keep coming up. Because you, you, can't, you can't let thoughts rule you. You got to rule thoughts. You got to rule what thoughts you let come in and come out. If a thought don't agree with what I'm, I'm not letting it come in. Because you're not just going to let anybody come in your house. I didn't say that once, so I'll go ahead and say it again. They look like a nigga. They talk like a nigga. And they smell like a nigga. It's probably a nigga. And so if it is, I'm just not going to let no any old nigga in my house. So I can't let nigga thoughts in my mind. Because nigga is a mindset. So I ain't going to get caught up on the word nigga. Nigga, 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 nigga. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. The word nigga makes you uncomfortable. <laughs> then just deal with it. You say it every day anyway. Whether you're white, black, Latino, Asian American, it don't matter. White people say nigga, just not when you around. Oh, you get called nigga a lot in, in a conversation. Some of your best, some of your best white friends, some of your best white coworkers. You think they look at you a certain way, and they say a certain thing, but on the inside, but whatever they saying don't matter to me one way or another because I'm free of whatever they think or whatever they talking about. Because, you know what, Ms. Shirley? I am not a black man. I'm not a brown man. I ain't a white man. I ain't an Asian man. I ain't a Mexican man. I ain't a Russian man. I ain't a German man. I'm an invisible man. So you really don't even see me. What you think you're looking at ain't really me. So, so, whether, so whether I bleach my skin white like Sammy Sosa or not, whatever on the outside don't matter because that's not who I really am. And so whatever you're trying to identify me by on the outside don't matter to me because that ain't really me. So if somebody call you a nigga, I ain't got a swing on no, nobody because that ain't me. Unless you think that you's a nigga. Somebody tell me I act like a little rich white girl. Because that ain't me. So it don't matter what you saying or what you think because I am secure in who I am. Like, there's three identities that you got. You got a now identity, an I am identity, and an is identity. What you attach to those identities mean everything. But those are your identities. So can't nobody put an identity on you. Can't nobody give you a false identity. If you don't want it. But if you let somebody dress you up and say you this and say you that, then that's what you're going to be. Yeah, is, is identity. Now identity, I am identity, and is identity. So let me give you this confession. Let's see, where is it? What the confession? Well, wouldn't it be something if I didn't write down the confession? I'm just playing with y'all. I've already done. It's somewhere. Oh, here you go. I'm looking at it. And so now, this is going to take uh, all of the arguments out of your life. Amen. Amen. So now when I confess something, when I confess that uh, 
by his stripes I'm healed. Right. And then I get that thought to say, no, you're not. Don't you feel that pain? Then, like, we're not going to have that argument no more. We're not, we're not going to have no more debates about what I say and what I am because my confession is going to match my identity. So I want you to get these down, and I want you to say these every day. Yes, sir. Yeah. Say, I am, I am prospering, prospering every, day. every day. Tell me what a lie at. Can't no thought tell you nothing different. Right. Can't no thought tell you that, no, you're not, because yes, I am. Yes, I'm prospering Every day. Every day, I am prospering. There's not a day that goes by that I'm not prospering. Just because you don't see it don't mean it ain't happening. I am prospering every day. I am growing In wealth, in wealth and wisdom, and wisdom every day. Every day. Ain't, no debate. Ain't no debate. Well, no, you're not really growing in wealth and wisdom today. How you going to tell me? Yes, I am. Hallelujah. Because I'm growing. Like, it, you don't know how that baby grow inside that womb. But you know that it's growing. So if you're pregnant, can't nobody come up to you and say, that baby ain't growing. Yes, it is. Don't matter if you can see what's happening on the inside or not, it's happening. So if somebody tell you that no, it ain't growing, yes, it is. I can't use nothing in your life right now to bring up to you about what's happening because you're growing in wealth and wisdom every day. Hallelujah. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask. I'm growing in wealth and wisdom every day. Say, every day, my wealth is multiplying. I didn't say adding. I didn't say subtracting. Mm -hmm. Multiplying. Every day. Not once a week. Every day. Because now, where that stool at? Oh, he don't even know the stool sitting next to him. Put that stool right here. Put it right there. I'm grow uh, every, day. every day. My wealth, my wealth is, multiplying. is multiplying. I am, I am advancing, advancing growing, growing, and moving forward, and moving forward financially. financially. Who going to tell you different? What thought going to come up and say anything contradictory mm -hmm. to that? Give me one. If you thought of one, give it to me. Anybody got none? Because can't nothing detract from what is. So every day, how you go to, because right now, you growing just naturally. Right. Every day, you growing. Why are you growing this way, this way? <laughs> you growing. Some of us grow uh, multiple times during the day. We eat something, we grow a little bit more. But every day, I'm growing. Every day, my wealth is multiplying. I'm growing 
advancing and moving financially every day. So now, if this is my wealthy place, right, and I'm making a confession that says I'm moving forward financially, then if I'm doing this, I'm moving forward. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. So they be like, well, you look the same you did yesterday. Oh, but it's different. Because you can't be so amazed or so focused on what you can't see. That's right. Because just because you can't see it don't mean it don't exist. They got a lot of things in your body that you can't see. Oh, but you know they there. You know them lungs there because you could go, So can't nobody tell me you ain't got no lungs? Yes, I do. Because I could breathe. And so I'm moving and advancing every day. And so now I can't have something come up in my confession. Like, you can't contradict my confession now. So as long as my, contra- my, my confession is moving, as long as it's growing, as long as it's moving forward, as long as it's advancing, you can't contradict that because it's true. It's only when something, 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 like, so now when you say, you know, you used to confess something, and you could say, uh, you could say, uh, I'm out of debt. Look at these bills. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't lie to me in the church. Don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. <laughs> People at the church, mm-hmm. I ain't never had that thought ever in my life. But it comes up. And so now, it kill your confession. Because now, you didn't let some statistics talk to you about your confession. And so now, who? Let me see. Let me see. Turn to Ephesians. We go close, because I don't even know how long I've been teaching. I ain't put my time on today. Verse 19, and to know, Ephesians 3, verse 19, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye may be filled with all the fullness of God. And so I'm going to close right here. Because no matter what things may say, I can't let those things become true in my life. Just because something is a fact doesn't mean that it's true. Because, all right, that's just, all right, they say they had a conversation between two people, and I was there to witness the conversation. And I can be a witness to say that he said she stole from him. And that might be a fact. But the truth is is that she ain't steal nothing. But the fact is that he said it. So just because something is said don't mean that it's true. And so I got to be able to reject facts and hit it with the truth. Because a fact cannot take the place of truth. Because they always got his side, her side, and then the truth. They got three sides to every story. Whatever he said and she said and what really happened. The truth. And so now, 
even if somebody presents or a thought comes up and something tries to contradict my confession or what I believe in, then I have to get to the point to where, like in verse 19, I pass the knowledge of that thing. Because even though I know that it's there, it's a fact, but it ain't the truth. So even if I got these bills right now, I got knowledge of that. That's a fact. But me being out of debt, that's the truth. And so I can't let facts detract me or distract me from the truth. And so just because I know something is there, don't mean that I got to accept it for what it is. And so just because somebody says something, so now if I, if I, if I say something and then uh, a thought comes up to contradict what I'm saying, you might sit there and say, dang, I do got, I, I do got to deal with that. But that's just a fact. Like right now, I do got to deal with that. But the truth is, is that I don't have to hold on to this in my body. But I'm not going to hold on to a fact, no matter how long the fact has been there. Because that fact, only when I accept the fact at face value yes, sir. does it become real in my life. But it still ain't the truth. And so I can't accept it as truth because it ain't truth. If somebody, if somebody lie to you, I don't care how believable they are in telling that lie. They got some people that could lie, like, uh, they could, boy, they could paint a picture, boy. They could, they could make you believe. They can get down like key sweat. They could beg and, and make you, and really make you believe that they're not lying. But they lying the whole time. So I don't care what accolades, acrobats, whatever things in your life trying to throw at you and be like, no, no, remember me. I'm past the knowledge of you. I might know that you exist, but you're not going to exist in my life any longer. So I hope that you have had a good time. Even though I ain't like you at my house, I hope you enjoyed yourself. But it's really time for you to get your stuff and go somewhere else. And so now the thief's not going to be able to come to your house no more. He got to go to somebody else's house. Because my house covered, and we got that peace that passed all understanding. And so if you come through that door, you got to be ready for what I'm going to hit you with. And so you can't come through there talking to me like you used to talk to me. Because I'm in a different position. Yes, I know some stuff now. Yes, I got a revelation yes, about who I am, yes, and I'm manifesting who I am in my life. Yes, and so it don't matter what somebody presents to you, somebody try to tell you that you is. Yes, sir. It don't matter what you did in your past. Yes, it, don't, it don't matter the mistakes you made. Yes, it don't matter what somebody uh, tries to put on you as a persona or as an individual. Yes, sir. Even though it might be a fact that I did that, I'm past I'm past it because it's in my past. So stop digging up old stuff. Stop living in old stuff. God says, I'll make all things new. That word was fire, right? Hey, that word was fire. So look, because that word was so fire, here's what you could do. Subscribe, like, and share, and don't forget to sow your seed. Sow that seed. Sow that seed.